Assalamu alaikum dear viewers around the world. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Building a Better Future. I'm your host Malik and I'm still here with Sheikh Kareem Abu Zaid all the way from Colorado. Uh, and if you'd like to check him out online, uh, you can see him at kareemabuzaid.com or his YouTube channel islamway 71 uh, I hope you have your Musafs next to you. Uh, the Sheikh is asking you to open it up to chapter 5, verse 54. We're talking about empowering a generation, the next generation, our children, most importantly, to be strong Muslims, to be confident Muslims. We're talking about making them the lovers of Allah. But we also say that a, an important characteristic is being humble, Sheikh. Now, Sheikh, shouldn't we be confident and strong and powerful? How, can, how, how does it work to be humble as well? Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna sayyidana wa nabiyana muhammadan abudullahi wa rasulah um, The verse you refer to is 5.54 Yes I encourage the viewers to look at it and read it and reflect upon it Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu O you who believe Allah is addressing the believers and when Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an commented about this, he said, when you hear that call, open your ears, because Allah is directing you to do something that is good for you, or banning you from doing something that is bad for you. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O ye who believe, man yartadda minkum an dini, if any of you decides to leave Islam, decides to not to submit, Allah will bring another generation who will do the work of Allah. What are the attributes of this generation? We chose to pick up three from this verse and another four attributes from other verses that we'll share later on, oh, sure. just to keep our viewers. We talked the last two episodes almost, if not the three, the last three episodes, about the first attribute, which is they are lovers of Allah and Allah loved them. And we talked about some of the means, some of the tools that we can instill briefly mm -hmm. but again I encourage the viewers to go and, and google that Ibn al-Qayyim 10 means to develop love for Allah okay beautiful beautiful piece of work not, not uh, as much as this tiny small tiny small but you as parents if you get it and comprehend it and read it you will be able to help your children develop that love as well okay from early age but we want to move on, inshallah. Okay. We want to open the doors for our viewers, but move on to okay. give them the rest of the picture because we still want to talk about the rest of the attributes and we want to talk, Malik, about the institutions Ta -da. that will teach these attributes. In, okay. Home, masjid, school. These three, home, three. masjid, school. Right. Okay. But the second attribute that we have is adillatin ala al mu'minina a'izzatin ala al kafirin meaning that they are humble amongst themselves as believers. Okay. And once it comes to non-Muslims in the battlefield, that's how it should be understood. In the battlefield. In the battlefield. Okay. Because with non-Muslims also, you're supposed to be kind because okay. you're supposed to convey the message of Islam to them through your culture. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, through, through your, 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 your character. That's character. what I meant. Okay. Right? But, adillah uh, al humble. We have a problem, and, and you brought up a very important issue which is how can you stay strong and confident right. and at the same time you see you're missing the point okay hadith abdullah ibn amr ibn al-as radiyallahu anhuma wal hadith in the fi sahihain here is what, how the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam defined real strength what did he say laysa ash-shadid bis-sur'ah the strong person is not the one who beats everyone down mm, okay the strong person is not the one who yells loud. The strong person is, the one who is not the one who uses profanity, mm. foul language. Am mm. that, if that, huh? No. But the real strong person, is the one who controls himself when angry. This is the real this strength. This is true strength. This is the true Controlling strength. Controlling your temper. That you're controlling your anger. Yeah. Your anger. Huh? Especially if you're angry with another Muslim. With another Muslim. A problem that we have, Malik, and, and that is why we have to begin with the new generation. A problem that we have in the Ummah right now, that our masajid, there is no harmony. 
people are bickering and fighting with each there other. There is no brotherhood. Yeah. How can we move forward without brotherhood? Is we can. Yeah. You see, we cannot. It's impossible. You see, again, I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, there are individuals in the Ummah who qualify for empowerment. Individuals. Individuals. Right. But collectively, no. Hmm. We don't. That is why these individuals have to get it and focus their efforts on the next generation. Because this must be done collectively. Okay. Not individually. SubhanAllah. Not individually. Uh, now we have to uh, bring up a generation that feels, develops humility. First of all, what is humility? What do we mean in this What way? do you mean by that? Okay. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained the contrary of humility, which is what? The opposite. The opposite, which is what? Arrogance. Of course, yeah. Right. Hmm. Huh. He said this to his companions when they questioned him sallallahu alayhi wa about a sign of arrogance. Is it a sign of arrogance that you dress nicely? He said, no. That you ride a nice camel, that you wear a nice shoes? He said, no. But arrogance is batar al-haqq, that you know the truth and you don't follow it. Oh, yes. وَغَمْطُ nas, And you belittle people mm. because of their color, because of their tongue, or because of their culture. You belittle them. You kiss. Insult them, make them feel small. Belittle them. And, and it's an act of the heart, by the way. Uh. Kibr is act of the heart. It's in the heart. Mm. Uh, you know, when, uh, when, when Satan developed it, Allah knew it. Remember the story of Adam and Satan? Oh. You see, Satan was so biased and righteous, and he was elevated to be seated with the angels. But he developed inside him pride. Pride. Allah knew it. And it spoiled everything. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the wisdoms for creating Adam, okay, bow down. Then, you see, Allah tests you right. so that he gets it out of you. <laughs> <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to bow down to Adam to get it out of him. It was concealed so far. Right. It was concealed so far, and Allah knew it. To expose so, the hypocrites. So, expose. so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed them. So we want a generation that is humble. Yeah, I, I, I look at, at, the, at the companions, that generation of the Prophet even when they Even when they make a mistake. And if Sahih Bukhari, there is, uh, I believe Sahih Muslim, if I'm not mistaken, a story that is out of this world. Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, Radiallahu an. He's from Ghifar. Ghifar had a tribe, big tribes. The powerful Arabia. tribe. Yeah. One day he told Bilal, Ya ibn Sauda, son of the black. Oh, an in, in insult to the color of his skin. Yes. Bilal is from Abyssinia. Mm -hmm. But the Sahabi. Of course. Jalil, yani he, he sacrificed for Islam. It's amazing beginning. story. Amazing story out of this world. Bilal goes. To the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Rasulullah, Abu Dhar told me, the son of the black. One word was said to Abu Dhar. Ya Abu Dhar, inna kam ru'un fika jahiliya. Abu Dhar, you still have jahiliya in you. You still have jahiliya in your heart. Some jahiliya in you. Some jahiliya in you. Tayyip. Oh. If Abu Dhar is arrogant, he would not have. Look what he did. Huh? He went to Bilal. He placed his cheek in the ground and he told Bilal, come step in here. SubhanAllah. He's basically saying, I'm sorry. Humility. Humility. And I hope the viewers can appreciate that, especially in America when they have a lot of yeah. racial tension. Yeah. They could see Islam 1400 years I'm ago sorry. is showing racial equality I'm through humbleness. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I made a mistake, okay? No. We're not angels here, okay? Right. We're going to make mistakes. Yeah, we're going to make You're mistakes. You're not an angel. Okay, if you're expecting me to be an angel, I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm going to make mistakes. But now is how can we humble ourselves? Right. How can I bring huh, a, a new generation that is humble? Right, this huh? is our goal. But look at the reaction of, of Bilal too. Look at the reaction of Bilal. He did not uh, put his foot on the man's face. Abuse, the, gener abuse the, the situation. Look, look. He said, stand up, my brother. There's the mercy and the love. Give me, That's the brotherhood. Give me a hug. Give me a hug.
forgiveness. Forgiveness. You see, that's what we want. We want a generation that loves one another. Exactly. Some people are mistaken humble, being humble for weakness. No. As a sign of weakness. But this is definitely no. not the case. No. Of course not. No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Of course, there is a situation when uh, your humility and humbleness is abused. Absolutely. Sure. This happens in the day-to-day -day life. We should, we should teach our children to stand up and say this is wrong. Right. But we should say it also in, in a nice way. In a nice way. Not abusing people, insulting no. people, and cursing. No. Returning yeah. bad with bad does not make it good. Of course, yeah. yeah. But if you see somebody who will not appreciate your humility and humbleness, and he will abuse your humility and humbleness, and he will abuse the fact that you're humble, stand and say, I'm sorry, you know, don't do this, and but do it in a nice yeah, way. Yeah, do it in a nice way. This yeah. is the character. In, in a humble way. So we want a generation like this, Malik. We have to have the generation because look at our masajid, racial fighting, yeah, cultural fighting, mm. because of due this, the people are refusing to give to give in for one another, humble humility for one another, okay, and better and better and better and better and better and better. Yani the, uh, Ibn al Jawzi uh, mentioned in one of his uh, Ibn al Qayyim actually, and, and I think Ibn al Jawzi as well. Uh, mentioned a story of, uh, I don't know if it is authentic or not, but one of these stories that we mentioned just to, for the sake of supporting um, uh, the argument that we're, we're saying. Mm -hmm. it, uh, 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 somebody who used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for seven years straight, he went to, to, to sleep at one night and then Allah revealed to him through a dream or a vision that this shoemaker, shoemaker mm -hmm. is better than you. The person who, who makes the shoes. Makes yeah. shoes. And at that time, that person is a low person in society, we could say. Yeah. Who's this person? Yeah, right. Who's this person? Right. So uh, he went to him and he insisted, with him, what do you do? He said, there is nobody who passes by me except I see him better than me. I see that person better than that me. That was his quality that, quality that rose him up to yes. a high level. SubhanAllah. Humility. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Look at Muslims now. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even mentioned this is a... That the one of you will see a straw in the eye of your brother. But you have a branch of a tree in your eye, you do not see it. Meaning we're consumed with observing other people. Observing other people. And criticizing them. Filled. Yeah. And we're filled with our own problems. Yeah, and exactly. when you just consume yourself with your shortcomings. Listen, Umar ibn Khattab, out of this world. I read this, this hadith. Umar ibn Khattab goes to Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman, radiallahu anhuma. Uh, Rasulullah so revealed to, to Hudayfa the names of the hypocrites in Medina in their way back, back from the Battle of Tabuk. But of course, he told him a secret. Uh, and this is one of the titles of Hudayfa that he is the secret keeper of mm. the Prophet. Omar went to him. Omar. Rasulullah said about him that if Shaitan meets you, Omar, one, one place, he will go the opposite way. In Yakun fi ummati muhaddathin fa Omar, mulhamin fa Omar. If there's um, in my ummah people who receive is Umar. If there's a prophet after me, will be Umar. Umar. Oh. Uh, he goes to Hudayfa. By Allah, ya Hudayfa. By Allah, ya Hudayfa. Is my name written? Oh. I said, no, but I'll never tell anybody after you. SubhanAllah. Uh, humility. This is the humility of a strong man who, who went to this level. Yeah. Humbleness. Well, that's what we need. We're we lacking need, this. We need to bring another generation that is not arrogant with one another. Of course. Because this will divide us. Oh, inshallah. This will kill the Umar. Shaykh, what about uh, striving for the sake of Allah? Is this a characteristic that we could talk that's about? That's the third characteristic. Yes. Okay, inshallah. We'll get, uh, get to into the next segment, inshallah. inshallah. Okay, stay tuned to your viewers. We have much, much more with Shaykh Kareem Abu Zaid. Up to heaven, heaven will rabbi. Welcome back to your viewers. Thank you for staying with us. We're still working with chapter 5, verse 54, so we hope you have your Musas, your, your Qurans with you. And Sheikh, we're talking about instilling humility in the next generation of our children, how important that is. Uh, we wrap that up. Now we want to talk about um, striving for Allah, how we teach our children to do this. Narrow that down and get into it a little bit. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. Malik, like you said, um, uh, we were talking about the qualities and the attributes that generation must have. 
One of them, they are loved by Allah and Allah loves them uh, and they love Allah. Uh, number two, they must be humble with one another. They must be humble with one another. And um, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I really have to expound a little, maybe a couple of minutes with, with this particular one. As we instill inside our children the humility and, and the humbleness with one another, we must always remind them of the virtue of this. Okay. Huh? Uh, uh, and also uh, the, 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 the negative aspect of this. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions that the one who has in his heart the, uh, the weight of an atom of, of arrogance will not enter Jannah. SubhanAllah. Um, and th these companions, and uh, Abdullah ibn Salam, uh, the first uh, Jewish rabbi who became a Muslim, uh, you know, he has a lot of servants, people serving him. He's a very wealthy individual in Medina. One day they found him walking into the market, and he woke out, woke out, uh, walked out of the market carrying on his back, uh, you know, stuff that he purchased. The people are looking, why are you doing this, Ibn Salam? I said, listen, my nafs, I started feeling proud, proud, and I wanted to put my nafs down. Allah. Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anh, huh? he, uh, one day he was walking with Anas, uh, another wording with Abi Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah, and by all of a sudden, he went inside a garden behind the wall and he started talking to, to himself. Ehin ya ibn al-Khattab, Amir al-Mu'mineen, ah? You are Amir al-Mu'mineen? Hmm. By Allah, ya Umar, if you do not fear Allah, huh? Allah will, 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 will place you in the hellfire. Ah. And then he comes out. Anas heard him. Another wording was Abu Ubaid. Why are you doing this? He said, I felt my nafs is trying to feel what? Proud. Proud. Check our egos, as we say Ego. nowadays, yeah. So we, we have to also, you know, um, we cannot praise our children if they walk in a, huh? In proud a way. Proud way. In a boastful we way. We, a boastful way. We, we should use the word boastful way. Yeah. But they should be confident of themselves. Yeah. Okay. But we'll, we'll go to the third quality in this verse. Again, we refer to that because we want to, our viewers to, 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 learn, to, to, to be sure of something, that whatever we're telling them, whatever we're t we're, we're de we are delivering is from the Quran and the Sunnah. That's it. The guidelines are in the Quran and the Sunnah to, to build a better future for the Quran. We're not bringing any works from your a book no. written by you or some no. of the shaykh. Okay. Not Socrates or Failas or this. Uh, <laughs> no philosophers. No, no. This is the Quran and Sunnah. How to build a better mm. future for the Ummah through preparing your children. The third quality that we're looking for and is mentioned in that verse number 54. It's chapter 5. Chapter number 5, Surah Al-Ma'idah. يا أيها الذين آمنوا أجين أيه بلي من يرتد منكم عن دينه فسوف يأتي الله بقوم يحبهم ويحبونه الله will bring again another generation if you choose to turn away from Islam number one Allah loves them and they love Allah number two they are humble with the believers uh, stern with the disbelievers with the disbelievers but again we have to be careful in the battlefield okay that's the condition okay because we're supposed to be nice with everybody because we're delivering islam here yeah. through your character right but what is meant here with the disbelievers battlefield battlefield or mean disbelievers <laughs> okay yeah okay. i mean in a way makes sense okay yeah. uh, number three يجاهدون في سبيل الله ولا يخافون لوم they strive in the cause of allah and they do not fear the blame of the blamers. What that means? Striving in the cause of Allah. Yujahidun, the word jihad. Ooh, <laughs> I mean, that's a big controversy. Scary now, word. Now we're uh, scared. <laughs> uh, oh, look at them. They are talking about jihad right. and all of this. You see, there are four types of jihad, Malik. Okay. Jihad al-nafs. Struggle against the soul. Jihad al-shaytan. Against Satan. Jihad al-kafirin. Against disbelievers. Jihad al-munafiqeen. Hypocrites. <laughs> <laughs> There's four. Okay. okay. You see, when we use the word jihad, the people say, again, is the kafiri. This is the, what we see on Fox News. Uh, that's CNN. the Fox News. No. <laughs> There's jihad and nafs. Okay. This is the main Now we're talking one. about our children here. Yeah. We want to build, build this, this up. Jihad and nafs. What is jihad and nafs? Okay. You have to instill in your children that there is an enemy inside you. Yes. Which is your nafs. We have to fight against our desires. We have to fight against our desires. Uh, I, I tell you something, subhanAllah, and have you ever punished your children for not praying, for not playing? 
playing. For not playing. Yeah, they they like to play. Right. They they know it's you, natural you, to them. It's natural. Yeah. Because the nafs was fashioned to like play. Right. To like the dunya, to right. like the quick passing. So now you want them to strive against their nafs. Okay. Now, you want to wake them up for fajr? Huh? They, it's, they're tired. They don't want to. No, you're going to wake them up. Okay. And you're not going to tell them, wake up for school. Wake up to pray fajr. Okay. Some parents, they say to ah. their children, wake up for school. They never tell or their they, children. I'm sorry, or they excuse them for fajr to get yeah. to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah Wake right. up for school. Sometimes the school comes so early. Yeah, right. Huh? right. But before fajr, <laughs> in America especially. Ah, for to catch uh, the bus. Wake yeah. up for school to catch the bus. Wake up for Fajr. Yeah. For the Salah. Fajr. Right. This is the important point. This is the important. Yeah. Awal one. You tell them the first thing, my son, that you're going to be asked about, it. my daughter, you're going to be asked about in the day of resurrection is what? The Salah. The first act. But you got to introduce these concepts them f for them to, to strive. The first act that you will be asked about in the day of resurrection is your Salah. Okay. Huh. How did you allow your child when you're commanded to, to, to train them at the age of seven to be asleep in bed when the time for Fajr is out. Huh? They will be asked in the day of resurrection about the Salah. The fathers and the mothers. First, first, the Salah. And if the Salah is complete, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look into the rest of the deeds. How can you do this? Uh, uh, what, what about this? What about the incentive? If you pray Fajr, you're under the protection of Allah. There's your incentive. That's an incident. Allah will protect you the rest of the day if you pray Fajr. For striving is you let them know that, listen, it's not comfy. You may have to come out of bed. It, Aisha may come a little bit late. Yeah, You're you going to have to stay, stay a little bit up, or wait up until, you, until you pray Aisha for Allah. Yeah. And Allah will reward you. So you have to teach them. To, from an early age, yeah. Striving from an early age. The problem with us that we love our children so much as Muslims and sometimes that love causes a lot of harm. Yeah, we let them get by. I'll, 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 I'll share with you a scene uh, just to, to show you this. I was sitting in, in Frankfurt airport at one time and I saw uh, an al-Muslim. I don't even know the person. Yeah. I'm a European guy. Yeah, right. You know, he's walking and carrying uh, a, a huge piece backpack. of back, 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 but huge one, all these army ones. Yeah, I've seen the ones like the yes, German guys. huge ones. And his son was carrying another one behind him. So his son is walking behind him and it's really heavy. Yeah. Really heavy. Yeah. And then by all of a sudden his son got, uh, got tired and he sat down in the, in, the, in the ground and started crying. Ooh, ooh, you know, crying. Yeah. You know, his father stopped and he looked at him like this and then he carried on walking. What do you think of that? What, what example is that? Come on, strive. Just get up, make an effort. Strive. Yeah. He cried maybe for a minute or two. And he he said that his father is... Walking away. Again, some of the parents will say, man, this is You're merciless. So tough. You're so tough, Sheikh. Why? This, yeah. <laughs> no, we, we, cannot, we cannot say yes all the time to your child. You okay. can't. You see, you got to help them to say no to their nafs. Yeah. If you as a parent telling them yes all the time, they will say yes all the time to their nafs, your child will never be able once. You see, the nafs, if you do not contain it, it will grow, become like a lion. Out of control. Out of control. Uh, add to this shaitan, you know, the, yeah. the, 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 the striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our children must develop this at an early age. Striving against your nafs. Fasting is the best way to strive against your nafs. Uh, uh, giving sadaqah. Okay. I love all the time uh, parents who take their children to the masjid and then they take 10 bucks out of, or, or one dollar or two dollars out of the, and my son go put this in the box. Oh, very nice idea. Beautiful. Teach him to, 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 to give, giving, to give. strive. Not just to receive, no, gifts, to, give to strive. Gifts. No, we teach ourselves. So all these are qualities that we can instill in our children to strive uh, against their nafs and uh, in order to be uh, that generation that we aspire. Inshallah. Inshallah. What about taqwa, Shaykh? Can we get into taqwa and piety in the next episode? Bi'idnillahi uh, ta'ala, we still have uh, taqwa. Okay. Uh, we want to talk about patience. Okay. A key. Patience. patience. Okay. Key. Patience. Okay. This is a key. Okay. Again, we want to talk about Ihsan, okay. and that will get us to Sayyidina Yusuf. Oh, I'm waiting for this. I'm very excited. Yeah. For this story. And then the last piece, uh, which is number seven, uh, attribute and quality, is the quality of loving al akhirah Okay. Why loving al akhirah Malik? Because Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he, he spoke to us about the condition of the Ummah at these days that we're living, uh, he says, time, Hadith Abi Dawood, Hadith Thawban, 
the time will come when nations will basically uh, group against you Muslims. Oh. Then the companion asked, because we're outnumbered, the messenger of Allah said, no, you're, you're plenty, you're a lot of you. Uh, but your impact is like a form of uh, in, 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 in the top of a running stream. Okay. Uh, and Allah will take out of your uh, out of the hearts of your enemies your fear, and He will cast into your hearts al uh, wahan. Uh, the companion Thawban asked the Prophet ﷺ, "What is al wahan, O Messenger of Allah?" He said, "Loving the dunya, Oof. loving the dunya, the dunya. Okay. and hating the hereafter." So when I talk about the hereafter we want to bring them up to love the hereafter, hereafter to work for the hereafter okay so inshallah we'll carry on talking about these qualities that we want to uh, that generation to have inshallah okay thank you so much Sheikh. once again jazakallah for your time uh, dear viewers you heard it from the Sheikh. we're having a wonderful a great and interesting conversation with Sheikh kareem abu Zayd. check him out online until the next episode at Sheikh at uh, kareem abu .com. and until next time i leave you in the care of allah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh اللهم اجعلني 